Today we're going to look at Bitcoin. Uh, it's just one of the many cryptos rallying. It's the best known. And uh, we're going to analyze what it's done historically, as well as make some projections as to the direction it's going to go pretty soon. Uh, go ahead and share my screen so that it's visible. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, our trading view screen. This is the platform I use to do all of my analyses, uh, projections. I take notes here. It's cloud-based. Um, right now we have this on a two-hour scale and uh, we're sitting at around $44,000. We broke through it over the past few hours. That's where we are. Uh, we can see a pretty nice rally structure here that started around, what, July 20th. That was a uh, local bottom. You'll see a couple of bottoms forming here. Um, of course, if you've been paying any attention to cryptos over the past several months, you'll realize that we had a much higher high as of this past spring. Uh, Bitcoin hit 60, was at 64.9, almost $65,000. Um, and we had a pretty nasty pullback since. And uh, with that, we've had quite a shift in sentiment, a lot of people panicking and um, calling for the death of cryptos and all that good stuff. Uh, but today we're going to show you why uh, I'm pretty bullish about cryptos in general. And uh, specifically, we'll focus on Bitcoin and the Elliott Wave structure. So uh, the way you start with Elliott Waves is you always want to look at the big picture first. The macro picture takes precedence over the micro picture. And what that means is that the big picture patterns are the ones that determine if you're in a long-term bull trend or you're in a, in a bear trend, if you're in a correction. Uh, market context is key to making good long-term trades, and it can set the, the basis for much better short-term trades as well. Um, so without any further detail, I'll go ahead and show you the big picture here. Um, so that was our peak. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the day view. And what we do is we look for structures. Um, obviously I have some charts drawn up um, on my other deal. We'll look at this momentarily, but I wanna kind of walk through the thought process just to explain how we built this chart up. So this is our day view and it goes all the way back to uh, the very beginning of crypto or very beginning of Bitcoin, which is the beginning of crypto. Uh, as far back as what 2012, 2011, um, there are some rallies, things that happened during that time period. Um, and you can see uh, way back here in 2017, there's a pretty good blow off rally. And if you guys remember this, this was the, the big hype that happened with crypto. A lot of people held on, hoping to sell at $20,000. And there was a pretty quick crash right after that, right back from $20,000. $20, you can see a clear uh, corrective wave behavior. So it's a one, two, three, ABC wave, um, followed by small counter rally, and then a lower low further down the line. Uh, but you can already kind of see that this, this is a prominent feature, top of an impulsive wave blow off, classic shape you've seen a commodity type of rally. This was followed by a small rally in uh, middle of 2019. They call this a fake rally or a fake out, whatever you want to call it, bull trap. But this topped out around what, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars before crashing pretty hard, all the way down to thirty nine ninety five. And this low right here is very significant because that coincides with an overall lull in the market. And there's a pretty sizable stock market crash in March of 2020, and uh, that crash took pretty much everything with it. I'd say the only thing that rallied during that time was uh, was the bond market. We had a pretty good blow off rally in bonds right around this time. But ever since that low, we have uh, what around four thousand bucks. Bitcoin has rallied all the way to sixty six thousand dollars, and uh, just to show how much of a percentage jump that was, we went from thirty eight twenty nine ish all the way to sixty one sixty two thousand dollars. That's a 1,595% jump for what, 16, 17X. Um, but that, that's the history of it. So first thing we wanna do with Elliott Waves, we wanna look for any structures and patterns. The problem is with this view is that you have a lot of sub $1 Bitcoin back here. It can be kind of a pain to actually analyze that. So we go ahead and switch to our logarithmic view, go ahead and auto scale this thing. And you have something that's far more usable than what we were looking at before. Um, I'd love to zoom out even more than this, but it's not letting me at the moment. 
Um, but we'll stick with this picture for now. Uh, actually, I might switch this to the week view. It's a better picture. Um, zoom in just a bit. Now you can see the entire history of Bitcoin on one screen. Um, now, when you look at this, there are some good signs here. You see impulsive waves, you see five wave structures, uh, like one, two. You can see subdivisions, clear fourth waves. A lot of technicalities here. Please be sure to view uh, my instructions on or my lessons on how elite waves actually work. But this is classic. You typically have some strong uh, impulsive surges followed by choppy corrections back, or we call consolidations, followed by more uh, rallies, things like that. And you can quickly see that there's some very prominent peaks in this sequence. Go ahead and start applying our Fibonacci retracement tools onto what we got. So if you look at this first prominent peak here, uh, right from there to there, uh, we had a rally to, what was that, about 1200 something dollars down to 156. And just uh, FYI, this Fibonacci tool, it also has a setting on it to make it logarithmic. And that is set. So if you have a log scale, make sure to reset your Fibonacci tool to logarithmic as well. Um, here you have a relatively shallow retrace. And then uh, you have a bit of a, the next peak hit just about the 78% retrace. But that's not really a significant Fibonacci, the big picture. So uh, I'm sorry, 76.4%. So we're gonna go ahead and try a different part of the chart. So how about try here? And uh, we'll go ahead and pull back here, show what kind of retrace that was. I'm gonna pull this back here. If you look at that, that's a pretty close to 30% retrace. Um, so once again, impulsive rally to about $253. We're gonna pull back. Uh, where exactly place the pullback depends. I'm placing at the lowest low here. Um, $44, we had a rally to the 61.8% retrace, or I'm sorry, uh, extension. That took us to about a thousand bucks, just a little past a thousand bucks. That is a standard Fibonacci number you'd expect. So this could uh, realistically be considered a, a sub wave one here. If you keep going further, you have a correction and it held the 23.6% retrace before a steady rally from 2015 all the way up to that, uh, that now infamous rally blow off top we had way back in uh, end of 2017, around 1995. Um, that topped out right around our 1.236% retrace or our extension, which is typical for the third of a third wave. Um, the actual third wave overall, you'd expect to uh, make it all the way to 1.382% uh, uh, or 1.382 to extension. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this back down. I'm gonna run a few more here. Um, assuming our rally started way down here, our, our impulsive structure, there's a couple of other equivalencies we can look at from a third wave to the fourth wave. Typically a fifth wave would extend out to the 61.8% uh, the retrace or extension. Um, that's a typical value. Uh, it could be anywhere from the 61.8%, 50%, 38.2%, those are all strong targets we could project. Uh, but overall, the way we're projecting this out is that this was actually our wave one here. I'll change this color. And uh, these are actually big wave ones. Uh, I'm gonna go and paste another one here. We call that a wave two, right there at the bottom. And then we had a, an impulsive rally all the way to wave Three. That's what we're going to call this for right now. And whether that's a wave three or sub wave three, we'll, we'll dig into a bit later. Um, but we could call this a wave four down here. Now, this is an interesting point. Uh, I'm going to put that fourth wave there. Typically, when you have an ABC correction, we have an A, B, C. Your C wave should run at least as low as where the A wave ran. Uh, however, I make exception here because when you look at the cryptocurrencies across the board, looking at various currencies and also what we call the, uh, the MACD number, the MACD, um, you'll see that, uh, actually I'm gonna add it up, double click that. It's actually not showing my MACD chart at the moment. Mm, gotta be somewhere here. Uh, I'm just gonna show my other chart. Uh, and look at the pullback here, big picture on our four hour view, you're gonna see a pretty good spike down where the wave C happens. 
Thursday night. So this is March 2018, or I'm sorry, March 18th of 2020. And then of course you had the original pullback further back. And it looks like the MACD didn't go quite as low. It's negative 318. Here it is a uh, negative 800. So uh, long story short, for a variety of reasons, I actually consider that to be the, the C wave. So I placed the end of the fourth wave here. With that being said, that brings our retrace up to about here, aligns with the bottom of that. And again, a common equivalency that you'd expect here, uh, projection extension for fifth, fifth waves would be, again, the 38.2% extension, 50% extension, 61.8% extension. These are all common targets for what we would consider a fifth wave. So I'll just throw a, a fifth wave symbol up there just for the uh, sake of the graphic. Put that there. So overall, this is the big picture. Right now, we, we're looking pretty good, and nothing is telling us that the rally is anywhere near over. Uh, so enough showing the hypotheticals and all that stuff. Let me show you what we got, what I've been working on the past several months. So I was just looking at this chart earlier. I'm going to put this on the daily view once again, and uh, go ahead and cut that down. And I'm actually going to get rid of the MACD at the bottom real quick just to make this more clear. Uh, you see your rally structure, once again, pretty clear. And I'm going to put this on the one week view just to show it big picture one more time. Um, shrink this thing down a bit. All right, so if you recall, we started our rally structure way down here at $2.25. Um, I did pick this as the one initially. Uh, it really depends on your perspective. What I demonstrated earlier did actually take this number here as our initial wave one. Maybe our wave one's here. It's not completely obvious, but either way, um, just to demonstrate what we're doing here, I'm gonna stick with this view here. We're gonna call this our anchor point right here. This is kind of our uh, ground zero, point zero anchor point, whatever you wanna call it. Right around $150. I'm gonna put this back on the day view real quick and then auto scale it so it's more visible again, what the shapes look like. Shrink this down until we are where we wanna be. Okay, pretty close. All right, so if you look at it from this perspective, um, we got our wave one here, All right? And as we mentioned, 78.6 is not really a strong fib number, but there's some confluence there. Assuming that that was actually the wave one back in 2017, this larger structure, uh, there's a couple of things that could be happening. Uh, Again, there's a strong Fibonacci sequence number at the 61.8% extension, right around $75,000, $76,000. You'll notice that we didn't quite make it there on our last uh, our rally earlier this year in, in 2021. Typically, if you don't quite make it to the extension, it's a good chance you're gonna make it there, maybe even beyond that on the next rally. Uh, that's one thought there. A um, couple other things here I was going to point out is that we do have a pretty clean rally structure. If we look even closer to the micro picture, I'm going to shrink this view down just a bit, make this more visible once again. So here we have a five wave structure for our wave one. They could kind of one, two, it could be a three sideways, fourth wave consolidation, all the way to a wave five here. Um, if you micro this down further, you'll see that there's pretty strong Fibonacci sequence structure here. Um, at a very brief retrace. And right now we're hitting the fibs almost perfectly in Bitcoin. So just to uh, just to reiterate what I just explained, we have a wave one, two combination here. Wave one topped out around 12.6 back in August of 2020. We had a retrace at 9.570. And um, beyond that, Typically, if you're using Fibonacci pinball, which is a trademarked uh, style uh, system of using Fibonacci ratios, that's very consistent. If you have a 61% extension for your first subwave, you typically expect 1.236 next, followed by 1.618. Well, if you look at the next peaks in this rally, we hit 1.236 perfectly. We had a nice pullback consolidation. Then we had a final blow off at the Pretty close to 1.618 extension, right around $64,000. And then we've had the subsequent pullback. So far, this is really looking 
clean. This looks like a third wave up here. Uh, I know this is kind of the wrong place. Let me move that there. That's a third wave. Uh, typically, if you hit the 1.618 extension, you're not going to fall back below the the 76.4% extension. Uh, that actually serves as a bottom line support. Uh, it's actually 76. I said 78 here. Uh, we actually barely broke down below the the 100% extension, the 1.0, and we're rallying. And we actually have a clear five-way rally structure. If you look at this closely, We've got a one, two, three, four, and we're finishing a small fifth wave here. Um, that'll top out. We'll look at the micro view in a second. But uh, big picture, we got a good rally. So based on what I've just explained, we hit the 1.618 uh, extension. If you hit 1.618 in your third wave, hitting the 200% or the 2.0 is a very strong target. That puts us at $103,000, $104,000, uh, which is pretty good target if you ask me. Um, I'm actually gonna zoom out just a bit. We're actually gonna go over some of the confluences uh, in addition to that. So uh, I know I shifted the view real quick. Let me just refresh real quick, make sure we're all on the same page. We had a bottom in March, uh, I'm sorry, July, or actually this is March of 2020. We had a nice five wave structure up. It's what I'm calling the first wave. Small wave to consolidation, pullback right here. And we've had a strong rally all the way into 2021, up to $66,000. That's what I'm calling the third wave. Following that, we've had a nice lengthy fourth wave correction. And fourth waves are lengthy. That's kind of their characteristic. They're typically not as deep, but they grind sideways for a long period of time. They're maddening, very frustrating to trade. It's a good time to keep loading up on positions if you're underweight on cryptos. And after this point, you have a few ratios that tell you uh, what fibs you're going to hit for the next part of the rally. Uh, so I'm going to go over the micros in just a second one more time. As I mentioned earlier, there's also another Fibonacci equivalence slash target thing that's based on 3-4 extension. That's actually what I have right here. So we have this long rally here, and we had a uh, little bit more than a 23.6% uh, retrace at the bottom of our fourth fourth uh, fourth wave consolidation. Most, the strongest target you would have for a fifth wave would be the 61.8% uh, extension. That puts that $161,000. So yes, you did hear that right, $161,000 target for Bitcoin in our fifth wave, which I actually have here. Uh, it's a little hard to see. Um, and you'll notice that there's confluence with the 238% extension of this five wave structure here, this wave one. They might be one, well, they might be wondering why am I favoring a target so high when it's past the 200% extension? Well, cryptos trade like commodities. In commodities, we frequently see something called a fifth wave extension in which the fifth wave is as powerful, if not more powerful than the third wave we've seen. You see it in silver, gold, soybeans, coffee beans, you name it. Uh, you see it pretty frequently, and cryptos are no exception to that fact. If you look closely at the rallies we've had in the past, especially uh, back in 2017, this thing just skies up parabolically. So when you see a parabolic top like what we're seeing here, or even what we saw in the bond market, TLT, back in March of 2020, those are good examples of what we call a fifth wave extension. Um, so there's two layers of, uh, well, two confluences so far, two strong equivalences there. There's also somewhat of a confluence with that uh, that previous FIB extension that we did, assuming that that 2017 rally was the top of, a, of wave one. Uh, you have some confluence right around the 78.6% uh, extension. Again, not the strongest FIB, but there is confluence. So uh, final uh, Fibonacci extension I wanted to look at was again, the micros. So again, when you look at this one, two, combination, you have some targets for the uh, for the subwaves within the fifth wave. So typically, <clears throat> if you do pull back to the, the one point extension, uh, you'd expect a wave one to go up to the 123.6 or 138.2% extensions. It's looking like we're going to get there. And uh, just to get a closer look, as I promised earlier, I'm going to apply a fib extension right here to the rally we've had so far. And if I go ahead and do that, assuming that's the third wave right there, I'm going to bring this retrace back down here. 
uh, our 61.8% extension is projecting us out to about what, 40, 47.7. 47.7, that, that's pretty close to that 1.382 extension. So near term, I do expect this rally to make it close to the $50,000 mark. I don't expect to get there. After that, I'm gonna move this, uh, well, actually, I'm gonna leave this where it is. We expect a pullback, maybe to 42, maybe a little less than $42,000. Might be sharp, it might be kind of scary. It's gonna deflate the balloon. You're gonna hear a lot of uh, people panicking over this. Once that happens, we're gonna have a third wave. And that third wave should get to about 65, $66,000. Um, I personally think it's gonna make it all the way to this green line here, 75, 76. And the reason why is that uh, we're expecting a bigger extension anyway, either to the 2.0 or the 2.382, whatever. Uh, in addition, there's a strong resistance here. So these resistance lines that have a lot of Fibonacci confluence, they act as magnets. They're going to suck the price real quick. So if we get to that $75,000 mark, uh, very good sign. Depending on how things shape up, maybe a good time to take some profit. Uh, but when it drops back, the way it drops back will tell us whether we're going to have that final blow off top past 100000 or not. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, so that's, that's the bullish scenario. Uh, again, we're looking within the next six to nine months, something pretty good happening here. Fifth of extension, never know it might go past $161,000. Uh, the alternate case is you never know until you have price confirmation. Uh, we might have a truncated fifth wave. We might only make it to $75,000. We might not even make it that far. This rally that we're having, it's doing everything right. It's looking bullish. If we start seeing any kind of corrective structure across the board for cryptos in general, if this thing has a sharp reversal and we have a strong retrace, uh, lower low, we might have that. We might have a C wave that takes us into a deeper wave four. And if it goes deeper, it may be a, a wave two. Wave twos are the bad thing is you're going to lose a lot if you hold on to your cryptos that long. The good thing is that if you buy at the bottom of wave two, you've got a lot of room to rally. So that's just an alternate case I don't have illustrated, but uh, but overall, you know, just if you're buying, uh, if you're doing dollar cost average, keep doing what you're doing. I do see a uh, a good buying opportunity coming if you're underloaded. So if you're doing DCA, just keep doing your thing. If you're waiting to put a lump sum in, I'd say wait a little bit. Um, let's hit, let this thing hit 47, 48k. Look for a pullback. Could be a 38% retrace. Could be 61. Uh, I'll, I'll post updates right around there. I'd say start buying. Um, if you have a large chunk of money, uh, you can divide it up into multiple buys. I'd say maybe divide it up into three purchases that are several days apart, something like that. Just to get the emotion out of it, just to make sure you don't buy at a peak or whatever. Um, and we'll take it from there. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, hope to be on again.